Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to this two-part video series, we'll be talking about aviation weather and taking a deep dive into weather reports. What is a METAR? How do you read them? And what does this automatic weather report have to do with a laser pointer? This video will be technical, so pay close attention and let's get started. Frankfurt information, Mike, Met report time 1220, expect ILS approach, runway 25 right. To learn more about weather reporting and forecasting, check out my previous videos about the ATIS on how to read it, as well as an upcoming video for the TAF or Terminal Aerodrome Forecast. Now, this video will cover the basics of the METAR seen across the world with part two, going into more specific detail with the remarks section and the trend type landing forecast. Firstly, the METAR or the Meteorological Aerodrome Report is simply a report of the current weather at an aerodrome or airport. Now, they are usually produced automatically every half an hour using a number of weather sensors from around the airport and then coded together for the pilots to access before or during the flight. They are used to show the current conditions, but importantly, do not contain any weather forecasting, except in some special cases. Because for a more accurate and reliable weather forecast, pilots use TAFs, which we'll get more into in a future video. Nevertheless, as for reading METARs, they can be very confusing to the untrained eye, but I'll break it down into the key points so that they make a little more sense even if you've never seen one before. So in this example, we have a METAR issued in Auckland International Airport in New Zealand, which I have broken up into sections for us to decode. Now it is important to note here that this is a general guide as different countries will have slightly different ways of writing aviation reports like this. The first useful part of the METAR will be the airport code and time of issue highlighted right here. Now the four letter code November Zulu Alpha Alpha is the ICAO code for Auckland Airport and the time code breaks down as the date and a time on that day to show when the report was issued. Now note that the time of issue is always given in UTC, which is why it is marked with a Z for Zulu time. Now this means that this report was issued at 7.30 p.m. Zulu on the 20th, but is relevant to the conditions in New Zealand at 8.30 a.m on the 21st due to the 13 hour time difference. Capiche? The next part is auto means that the report was generated automatically by a weather computer using sensors from around the airport. Now almost all airports which serve commercial airline flights will have meters issued automatically every half an hour. Next up, we have the wind at the time of issue or measurement. Now the first three digits give the true wind direction with the following two showing the wind speed. Now the unit is shown as kilo tango, meaning knots, but it is sometimes in other units such as meters per second denoted as MPS, which can be found in mainland China or Russia. Now in this example, we have a wind of 310 degrees at a speed of two knots. Note that the wind direction is in degrees true and not in degrees magnetic and often will not match your compass. So at Auckland Airport, the variation between the true and magnetic is about 20 degrees east, which can make a significant difference. Now it is often said that if you read a wind, it is in degrees true. If you hear it, so given by ATC or by tower, it's in degrees magnetic. At 1736, San Francisco Tower, wind 2706, runway 28 left for the land. 
I cannot stress this importance of this because many students fail their flight tests for forgetting to convert the wind in meters and tafts. So do not forget that. <laughs> okay, nevertheless, let's continue because you may see the letters VRB meaning variable wind direction. Now this is often associated with light winds of two to five knots. Now a single letter V between two directions such as 340 and 050 means the wind is varying between 340 degrees and 050 degrees. Now this is used when wind is varying at significant speeds which can make it hazardous for pilots coming in for landing. Now following the wind speed is the visibility. Now this number varies widely around the world depending on the system of measurement used by the country. Now here we have 9999, which means a visibility of 10 kilometers or more. Now note that while 8,000 would mean 8,000 meters or 8 kilometers and 4,000 would mean 4 kilometers, etc. Small domestic airports with lots of VFR traffic will often specify visibilities out to much greater ranges of up to 50 kilometers since it is more important for VFR pilots to know. Now in countries which use the metric system, the unit will be meters or kilometers and won't always be specified as we've just seen here. However, in the United States, you will often see visibility denoted in statue miles, such as in this example from Los Angeles International, where the visibility is 10 statue miles, equivalent to 16 kilometers. The letters November Charlie Delta refer to the clouds and are an abbreviation for no cloud detected. Now this is similar to Sierra Kilo Charlie or Sky Clear, which is often found in the 80s. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that a laser pointer was relevant to the meter and this is where it comes to use. The laser silometer is an instrument which uses infrared laser light to accurately detect cloud type, base height and thickness automatically but due to its requirement for precise calibration does not rotate or detect cloud other than that what is directly above the sensor. Another important concept for clouds in aviation is that of the octaves. Now in essence, we split up the sky into eight equal parts to measure the clouds. If all eight parts are cloud free, we say it's sky clear. If one or two eighths of the sky contain clouds, then we say, well, there are few clouds showing on reports as few. If there's three to four eighths, we call the cloud scattered denoted as Sierra Charlie Tango. Now importantly, five, six, and seven eight are called broken cloud, shown in the reports as Bravo Kilo November. And if all eight parts are cloudy, then we say it is overcast, which is shown as Oscar Victor Charlie. And following a cloud measurement, you will find an altitude in feet, such as 050, which means 5,000 feet above ground, informing pilots on the base or bottom of the clouds or cloud layer. Now, this is particularly interesting when flying a non-precision approach, like a VOR on NDB, with a higher minimum than an ILS. Now, let's say you've just read a meter with 005 overcast, and the airport elevation is at 1,000 feet, and your minimum is at 1,600 feet. So 1,000 feet airport elevation plus 500 feet overcast equals 1,500 feet. So lower than your minimum, meaning you won't see that runway at 1,600 feet minimum. Does that make sense? So always visualize when you'll break out of the clouds when flying an approach. Continuing with our report, we have the numbers 21 slash 18 showing us the temperature and dew point usually shown in degrees Celsius. Now the dew point is important as it tells pilots about the humidity at the airport and gives an idea of whether any cloud formations could be expected. Now for more information about the dew point, check out my video right here. Now the next part is the air pressure. Now in our example, we see the letter Q, meaning Q and H, which is given in a unit called 
hectopascals. Now the pressure is very important as it is used to calibrate the altimeters. Now note that the QNH is used to show the altitude above sea level, not above the aerodrome level. Now for the altimeter to show your height above the aerodrome, you would need to set a QFE. So think of the field elevation. Now in Auckland, the difference is only 23 feet or seven meters between the sea and the runway. But at some airports like the Mariscal Sucre International Airport in Quito, <laughs> Quito, Ecuador, where I have already landed with my Boeing 747, the elevation is somewhat 7,874 feet or 2,400 meters above sea level, meaning that the altimeter would still read roughly 7,880 feet after landing. For my American viewers, you will often find that the altimeter setting is given in your meters as, for example, A2992, or as we see in the example here from Los Angeles, A2989. And here the A is actually the meaning for altimeter setting, reminding the pilots that the number is given in inches of mercury and not in hectopascal. This scale is more precise, but is less used, and most countries will give you the air pressure in hectopascals, as this is the international standard set by the ICAO. Now that we have made it to the end of the report, we get to the more variable parts where meters are often the most confusing and different from country to country. Now, there's a lot more to discuss here regarding remarks and trend type landing forecasts. So stay tuned for part two of this video, where we will break this all down to make it easy to understand. You'll also find in the description a link to my website with a helpful PDF booklet with abbreviations for meteorology, as well as a full Wikipedia page to decode METARS. If you are still left confused, talk to your flight instructor <laughs> for more advice. That's it for today. If you have any more questions about aviation weather or maybe some other aviation related question, please be sure to check out my other videos in my channel and comment below for the chance to have your question answered in a future video. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.